Hey there all you cats and kittens, the bug today is actually pretty nuts, a CVE in Redis that is a, a severity 10.0, one of the rare 10.0, the most severe that a vulnerability can be. Let's talk about who this Redis fellow is, Redis maybe, uh, and it actually ends up being a sandbox escape from Lua, so it's a bug in Lua in Redis, it's absolutely nuts. Uh, if you guys don't know what Redis is, right? So if you're doing any kind of web application development, right? Kind of typically you have two primary elements for your backend. You have, you know, the backend code. And then you also have the database, right? The database is where all your data gets stored. And typically there's some kind of broker that talks to the database and you run these things called SQL queries, select all from users where blah, 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 right? Well, the problem is, at a certain point, if you have enough users, which I know a lot of you, you know, eh, uh, if you have enough users, enough queries going on in the database, this becomes extremely inefficient, right? The amount of time it takes to actually run the query, go hit disk and pull data out from disk and send it back, not very fast, right? So this Redis thing is uh, basically a middle layer that you can use as a caching element, right? So Redis fundamentally is just an in-memory key value store that lives in RAM. So what you can do is you can have not only a broker talk to your database, but also use this Redis element as like kind of another place to store memory that uses a caching system, right? So you can say, hey, before I go and do this query, go look in Redis. Do we have a recent query for that having been already executed, right? If we do, pull data from there so we don't have to go back to the database, but if we don't, go to the database, get the data. Now, to do this, obviously, most of the time, this connection should be authenticated. It is possible that maybe you're in some AWS cloud environment where this is like a private VCP, so you may not feel the need you know, to do authentication for this, but generally, the connection between the backend and the Redis system is a trusted element, right? It's like a trusted connection. Now, the underlying issue here is, again, a 10.0 severity CVE that leads to code execution inside of Redis, right? due to a use after free in Lua. A lot of words going on here. The Redis engine actually allows you to upload Lua scripts, right? You can do that for automation. You can do that to make sure that like your system is running properly. There's a lot of cool features that Redis has that allows you to upload a Lua script. Now, what's important to know about Lua is that Lua is a garbage collected language. And yes, of course, today's video is sponsored by me, yours truly. Guys, I honestly believe that if you wanna be a good programmer or a good cybersecurity analyst, you have to know how computers work at the fundamental level. And in my opinion, the best way to learn how the computers work is to learn a language like C or learn a language like assembly. Now on Low Level Academy, I have courses that do just that. In Zero to Hero C programmer, we go through and learn the entire C language. And at the end of the course, you make your own little employee database project. And we've recently added a feature where you can go and as you're making commits to your project on GitHub, it will automatically run tests for you and test to see if you've passed the project. And then eventually if you complete all the modules in the course, you get this cool little certificate here that if I move my fat head, this QR code can be used to cryptographically verify that it is actually your certificate. And guys, if you put your email address right here on the site, you can get a free three-day C course sent right to you. You'll learn how to write your first couple lines of C to get your feet wet in the world of low-level programming. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let's keep Now, going. if you're not aware, in programming, you kind of have two options when it comes to memory management, right? You have manual memory management, the languages like C let you do, where you use malloc and free, and you, the programmer, are required to explain explicitly allocate the memory and give it back to the computer. Now this gives you extremely finite, extremely efficient and fast control of the memory, but in the exchange for, you can make mistakes, right? You can potentially not free the memory, you can use it after you free it. So typically manual memory management is fast, but more dangerous. Whereas languages like Lua, right, or Python, interpreted languages have these things called garbage collectors, right? A garbage collector basically is as you're writing the code, as you're running the code, the garbage collector is automatically allocating memory. It says, oh, you wanna make a new table? Oh, you wanna make a new string? I'm gonna go out automatically and get the memory for you so you don't have to think about it, which is great. And then typically they have these things called mark and sweep garbage collectors. There is a, uh, a structure of data that has pointers to all of the currently in scope objects, right? And what'll happen is when an object goes out of scope where you no longer need it, the mark and sweep allocator will do, it'll literally mark all the objects that it can see. You see it turning them blue here. It's like, okay, I see these, I see all the dependencies of those objects and objects that are not marked will be swept. I mean, they are given back to the memory allocator. So they effectively are freed by the garbage collector. Now, this all sounds well and good, right? This sounds like, you know, the world of interpreted languages that is very safe and effective and easy to use. But 
understand, and the kind of the whole point of this channel, everything that I make in this channel is to drive home the point, everything is code, code can have vulnerabilities. So as a result, garbage collectors are also code, okay? It's important to understand that Redis uh, ships its own version of the Lua interpreter, okay? The reason for this is Redis has different performance constraints than probably the rest of the use cases for Lua. For example, you know, I, you know, I just did the Towers of Mordoria event with Prime and Tej and all the homies. We use Lua, you know, our code wasn't super fast, but Lua needs to be fast in Redis, okay? So they have their own version. Now the vulnerability here is super interesting. There is a use after free in the Lua parser related to T string objects. I don't know what T string objects are, but effectively what's going on here is when the parser is running, it's running over the code that the user gives it to try to like, you know, make it do its thing. If it sees that you are trying to create a T string, it will create a T string and allocate that memory from the garbage collector. But the issue is that it does not immediately put it into the garbage collector root. In Internal to the Lua garbage collector are these things called GC objects, garbage collectible objects. And basically any structure in Lua that can be collected at runtime by, by the GC has to be derived from those structures, right? And so here we have this structure that's known as like the one of the GC roots. Uh, it's basically just a stack of pointers that point to currently in scope things, right? And so when you make objects in the GC, the GC has to track those objects and this is one of the ways that it does it. The issue here is that in the custom implementation that Redis has for the t-string object, it creates the object, but it does not add it to the GC root. So by doing this, if the garbage collector runs, right, immediately after the GC root is not added to, immediately after the t-string object is given to the user, what happens is this object is not only returned to the user to be used by the program, but it's also returned to the memory allocator. And so what can then happen is you have this thing called a use after free, where if the memory allocator thinks that this is free, okay, it's going to give that object back to the memory allocator, right? And it may give that same memory region back to you as a new a new structure, like let's call it Mordoria Tower, right? It's just, it's just a new structure that we have inside of our Lua code. But at the same time, I still, as the user of the code, have a pointer to the previous T string object, right? I'm not sure why uh, Xicaladra is fighting me on this. Um, I have a pointer to the previous T string object, okay? This is a classic type confusion via use after free. Because the garbage collector did not properly track the T string object, the GC freed it when it was not free but it gave it to me anyway, right? Very, very interesting stuff. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about why this bug got such a high CVSS score. If you look at the CVSS, and first of all, some of you guys in the previous video of the SNMP bug were like, oh, if you just read the CVE score. No, I know how to fucking read, dude. What I'm saying is that I think the, the metrics that they chose are incorrect. And I think it's the same thing going on here. If you look at the CVSS V3 base metrics, these are the numbers that they use to derive uh, how hard it is to do the exploit and then the result of the exploit when exploited, right? And so you look at things like attack complexity low, um, I don't know, triggering a use after free in a garbage collected language. Now, now, now let me explain something really quick. All because you have a use after free does not mean that this like just gives you code execution. You need to set up the environment that you're running properly such that when you have a type confusion, the second type has control in places that give you code execution based on what you control in the t-string, right? So you would have to use this type confusion to enable an arbitrary write. You'd have to use this type confusion to enable some kind of overflow somewhere, right? So even just this on its own, while extremely complicated and not predictable because it's dependent on a GC run, this in and of itself is not even RCE yet. So when they say that the attack complexity is low, doubt, um, privilege is required. Literally, this bug requires you to be authenticated to the Redis instance. Now, 
it is definitely possible that there are Redis instances on the internet that don't have credentials enabled. And like, that's more of a user implementation issue than it is like a software issue. So that's not real. Um, and then user interaction, none. So the rest of these, I, I agree with, right? But the fact that it says attack complexity low, privileges required low is like a little confusing to me. Um, either way, cool bug, right? Like the, the, like the fact that it is not only just an RCE in a big platform that everyone uses, but it's also RCE via a sandbox escape in a garbage collected interpreted language. That's just, mwah, that's just chef's kiss, man. That's absolutely crazy. And then, so the question on your mind, that I know you have is would Rust have fixed this? Uh, I mean, okay, so technically yes, right? Rust is a language that like the whole purpose of the borrow checker is to disable, to not allow use after freeze to occur. Basically Rust employs this idea of ownership where objects are owned by certain labels and only one label at a time can free an object. And once that object is freed, none of the other labels can access it. So like, that's kind of the whole point of the language. And that being said, you know, obviously Lua is not written in Rust. So that's a whole other conversation for a different day. But technically, yeah, by the, by the structure of how Rust is written and like the main purpose of Rust, Rust would have solved this. But that being said, Rust is also a lot harder to write. So there you go. Um, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Pretty simple video. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, also do me a favor, check out Stack Smash in the description below. We got the public launch going on in Q1 of next year. And then we'll see you in the next one.